G'day guys and welcome back today to another video on the Druzy channel. Nine things that we learned from round five. Here we go. There were lots of upsets. I was upset and the whole season has been flipped on its head. Lots to talk about in this edition of nine things we've learned. So if you're enjoying this series, it would mean a massive amount to me. If you could leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new and comment down below the things that you learned from round five. Let's get into it. Number one. The Lions' run to finals begins. Two wins on the trot now for Brisbane, who started the season really slow, but that win on Thursday night was the best win that I've seen them have in a long time. I was at the game, and going into it, I was pretty confident that the Ds were going to win, given the form of the two sides early on in the season. But Melbourne, they looked really lethargic, really tired. They had played more footy than anyone going into this round. Obviously, they played in the opening round, so they get the bye next week. But let's give all the credit to Brisbane. They absolutely dominated every facet on the game on Thursday night. The strongest part of Melbourne's team has been their midfield. They've dominated all year. Viney, Petrarca and Oliver have been massive all year. But Brisbane dominated the clearances all day long. Cam Rayner had one of his best games I've seen him play at the level. Lockie Neal just did what Lockie Neal does. And they just thwarted the impact that... Oliver, Viney, and Petrarca have. I'm pretty sure they all had less than 25 touches, which is very rare for the Ds. For all this talk about Hitwood and Danaher not working, I can see why people have said that in the past, but I really rate Hitwood. I just think he's been out of form, and I think sort of the whole team operating as a whole, he'll get on the end of it and sort of get back to his best. He is a good player, let's not forget that. And Danaher had a massive game as well. Charlie Cameron looked closer to his best. It was just an all-round great effort from the Lions. They've won two in a row. They come up against Geelong in round six, which is a massive, massive game. And it'll be a great test to see if they're actually going to be a re real deal in this season of footy. But the last two weeks have been a massive improvement and they can start to make their run to finals now. Number two, Essendon can pour it on. The dogs can't stop it. This was an entertaining game. I don't think either of these sides will make finals, and I don't want to put a dampener on it straight away, but there was just no defense in this game. You know, the Dogs conceded 10 of the last 11 goals. Their defense is looking so shoddy. The personnel isn't really there. I don't know why they're not bringing in Jed Buzzlinger. He was a top pick out of WA, the best sort of defender out of WA in that draft class, and he hasn't even had a look in yet. So I don't know why he isn't playing as a key defender that's a high prospect. It was a great night for Essendon, particularly out of the middle of the park, and some of their new players as well. Todd Goldstein, even in that loss against Port Adelaide, looked really good. Xavier Dersma, that was definitely his best game for the Dons. It's the best I've seen him play in a long time. And Langford's picked up where he left off last year. So, absolutely great win for Essendon. Um, and when they get a run of momentum, they've shown this year that they can pour in goals. Still not convinced defensively about the Dons though I feel like it's way too easy to score on them but to be fair to them they got on top of the stoppages on top of the contest and they stormed home to win a massive Friday night game in front of the biggest crowd at Marvel in a long time as well so overall positive for the Dons but still a long way to go number three the Saints slow starts are becoming a theme they hardly showed up in the first half against Richmond they were pretty much dominated for the first two and a half quarters against GWS, who are, to be fair, one of the better sides in the competition. But they absolutely stormed home and showed a lot of quality in that last quarter. When you thought the game was done, they ended up only losing by a point. The Saints, I think, have showed me enough that when they get their best footy going, it is pretty good. Like We saw it against uh, Collingwood earlier in the year. And they played really well against Geelong as well. But you've got to bring it from the start and you've got to hit the scoreboard early. They'll build into the season and hopefully Max King isn't out for too long. But we just need to see a four-quarter effort from St. Kilda. I don't think we've seen it in a few weeks now. Number four, the Crows looked back to their best. This is probably the game of the year. 15 lead changes in the game. Colton finally lose a close one. Thank you, Adelaide, for the justice served for my boys. It was good to see Colton finally lose a close one, especially at home. I think the biggest difference in Adelaide's game on Saturday compared to earlier on in the season is that we were starting to move the ball fast. Against Melbourne, they were sort of kicking it wide, kicking it back, kicking it long down the line. I don't know if they're a great Marvel side or what it was. Maybe they just got to boot up the arse midweek and knew that they had to go a bit quicker, but they look so much better when they move the ball faster, and they started to do a lot better things out of the middle of the ground as well. Putting Isaac Rankin in there gives them a bit more class, a bit more skill. He looked really good. He went forward and kicked some goals as well. Ben Keyes had his best game of the season, but it's just what you needed to see as a Crows fan after the poor start to the year. A big away from home win, which you were definitely the underdogs going into. It's a massive win in one of the games of the year so far. Number five, 
There's no more excuses for Hawthorne. First of all, I just wanted to say Gold Coast are looking absolutely phenomenal at the moment. One of the best midfields by numbers in the competition. Their forward line is potent with King, a couple of the academy lads coming through, uh, etc. They're looking great. Mac Andrews had a great start to this year. They're going to be a massive chance for finals, the Gold Coast Suns. But Hawthorne are a side that a lot of people expected to rise. And I rated the Hawks based off their performances last year, but we have not seen anything this year. It's been dreadful. Their midfield was comprehensively beaten. They just didn't really possess the ball much at all. The disposal difference in this game was absolutely massive. And the coach, Sam Mitchell, in his post-game press conference, had some choice words, alluding to the team as soft, not wanting it, not wanting to get dirty. That's a rough thing to hear from your coach that's leading your football club, that your players are weak, that they're not showing up, they're not performing, they don't want to get dirty. I thought last week that second half against Collingwood was a good sort of springboard to launch into the next sort of period of the season but they completely just didn't show up against Gold Coast and although Gold Coast is a tough side Gold Coast away it's a tough game you got to simply show up and at least provide some toughness some aggression a bit of tackle a bit of head over the footy when you need to and by all accounts Hawthorne did not provide that needs to be better from Hawthorne no more excuses number six Frio's forward line continues to let us down We've lost in another close one where our backs have held up all day, where Sarong, Brayshaw, Hayden Young, Nat Fife are brilliant out of the middle all day. And we go forward and the forwards just can't get the job done. Having said that, I was pretty happy with some of the performances, particularly from Josh Tracy up forward. I think that was his best game I've seen him play for Frio. Kicked three goals in three minutes. His pressure acts all day were great. He took some real big contested marks. So great signs from the big kahuna. Jai Amos is having a bit of the second year blues. But although I did still see a couple of things from him that I liked. But he's getting the best defender every week as a 20, 21 year old. It's going to be a tough year for him if the rest of the forwards around him aren't working. Tommy Emmett and Sam Switkowski did their bit. But you can see the age bearing in on Michael Walters now. Matthew Tabernard did nothing really for us all day. And Bailey Banfield just did not take his chances. So I think heading into the Derby next week, we need some changes. I think Sean Darcy coming back into the side pushes Tabernet out and that allows Luke Jackson to go forward. I'd like to see Walters managed and potentially a debutant coming in like a Cooper Simpson or a Jack Deline, something like that. We get Heath Chapman back in for the Derby as well. So we've played some really good footy this year. We've been a real tough side to beat and we could potentially be 5-0 and to be honest, but that's not the way that things have gone. Unfortunately, I did a whole reaction to the Frio result in my past video on the channel. So if you want me to dive deeper into this, go and check that out. But overall, Frio's forward line has let us down again when we were probably the better team on the day. Number seven, the Cats could make the top four. Last time the Cats were 5-0, and they made a prelim. That was in 2017. The Cats are 5-0, and and you could make an argument that their start has been pretty easy. You think about it, Saints, Hawks, Crows, North, and who else have they played? The Dogs. So not the hardest start especially when you play, what, two or three of them at GMHBA. But you can only beat what's in front of you, and they have looked absolutely outstanding so far this year. They've got the Lions this week, which will be a big test, and I want to see how they go against the better sides, but starting 5-0 and has given them such a great platform to launch into the rest of the year. It gives the young players confidence in their game to take the game on, to execute the game plan. Really liking the game of guys like Ollie Dempsey, Maxi Holmes, obviously, Brad Close. There's contributors all over the park for Geelong at the moment. They're playing a great brand of footy. Yes, against lesser teams, but let's see how it stacks up. They're in a great position to play finals and potentially make the top four in 2024. Number eight, the worst of West Coast is done. I think West Coast getting comprehensively pumped in non-competitive efforts is probably done. And a massive part of that is the impact that Harley Reid is having on this football club. He had 27 touches and a goal, but every time he gets the ball, the, you can just feel the whole stadium and even the team lift because what this kid is doing is absolutely remarkable. Taking the game on, he don't argue Dusty Martin today, and he's just an energizer. He plays with confidence, he's cocky. He is giving the Eagles something that they haven't had for the last three or four years. I tipped West Coast to win this game. I just felt that their clearance game and their midfield is really starting to get going. Tim Kelly, yo, Reid, Jinby out of the middle. They've been playing really good footy uh, and getting it inside 50. So it was only a matter of time that their forward game clicked. And Jake Waterman had a massive game today. I think he kicked six goals. 
Um, looking like a prime Jack Gunson. He was massive today. So well done to you, West Coast fans. There's been a lot of hurt, a lot of pain in the last few years. But you head into the derby, a home derby, with a lot of confidence. And given our last two results, I'm a lot less confident. I think we still will do yours, but uh, you're in a great spot to give us a good shake. And I think this gets your season off to a relatively okay start now that you've had a win, gives you some confidence, etc. So I reckon the worst of West Coast is done. It's about time you mugs start being competitive. And number nine, we're closing in on 10K subs. We're about 850-ish away from 10K and 57% of the audience still isn't subscribed. So if you're enjoying the content on the channel, it would mean a massive amount to me if you could subscribe to the channel. I said it last week, but the more subscribers I have, the more seriously I can take this and the better content I can produce. So if you want to support the channel, that would mean a massive amount to me. Comment down below the things that you learned from round five of football. Get in the comments, like the video if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week for more booty content. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care, you plonkers.